Across the nation, from Bathgate to Brora, a new generation of mums-to-be are going gaga for social media. Oh. Right, that's it? That's it posted? That's us officially pregnant. We're having a baby! <laughs> from the second they find out they are hashtag up the duff... Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! You're pregnant! Oh my God! <laughs> To the moment their precious newborns take their first breaths. Oh my goodness. For these social media darlings, nothing is off limits. Mummy! But what's the story behind the selfies and the hashtags? Probably start crying again because I haven't cried for 48 hours. Please sleep. Please. When nothing goes to plan. Oh, it's just such hard work. In real life. This time, we meet three absolute beginners. Everybody asks me, have you got your pram? Have you got this? Have you done your nursery? No, none of it. Pregnant for the very first time. Generally, just not fitting into any of your clothes. That's a bit pish. <laughs> and facing three very different challenges. I didn't think I would have such a happy, smiley baby because I thought I wouldn't be a good mum. As they prepare to bump birth Baby. Oh, Jesus, my face. Meet 26 year old Lauren. What's in my bag? Beauty edition. This is my bag, and this is all my products inside that I use. A Glasgow based flight attendant. YouTube vlogger and Instagrammer, with over 1,700 followers logging in to hear her travel stories from around the globe. You having fun? Loads of fun. So nice, aren't they? So nice! Back on home turf in Glasgow, Lauren and her partner David have some very vlog-worthy news. We're having a baby! <laughs> we are so having a baby. This flight attendant is passing up the high life for a one-way ticket to motherhood. I'm elated. I'm just so happy. Every day, it's just I wake up and I'm like, ah! Switching her vlog's focus from travel to expectant mum. I'm 17 weeks now. I can show you my bum. This is what I've got going on. So it's a big baby. <laughs> and sharing the best and worst of her pregnancy. Your skin's all glowing, you can eat whatever you want in moderation. With her growing army of YouTube followers. Check how baggy, man. The worst parts are, morning sickness wasn't fun. Generally, just not fitting into any of your clothes, that's a bit pish. <laughs> Today is Lauren's 20-week scan, and in true vlogger fashion, she's sharing the news. The busiest of days today, finding out if we're having a boy or girl, and then we have our 20-week scan just to check on baby's health. And so I'm, I'm not even worried. I'm just so excited to see the baby again on the, on the ultrasound. I just can't wait to see his or her wee face. So cute. Excited for boy or girl? Excited for a healthy baby. Or boy or girl? Healthy baby. Boy or girl. I would be happy to see you. No preference. We've just left the hospital. hospital and we have a healthy baby with healthy organs. Which is the healthy. main healthy and the main thing. Yay! Big day! I should have vlogged it earlier when you were being all crying and emotional. That would have been nice, not when you were like, THE TRAFFIC! And we're about to go and do a gender reveal with the grandparents. We're making our way over to David's parents first. I put a balloon in here in this Peter Rabbit box, which is so cute. And um, once they open the box, the colour of the balloon will just blow out and tell them what they're having. US trend for posting gender reveals online. <laughs> has been quick to catch on in Scotland. Three, two, one, and go! 
with mums-to-be vying for the most elaborate ways to share their news with family and friends. Lauren and David, it's off to David's parents first. And it's Peter Rabbit, how cute is Peter Rabbit? Blue? Boy? Boy? I see a boy. Get out! With four months to go until Lauren's daughter makes her entrance into the world, her gender reveal post has earned over 2,000 views. Thirty-four-year-old Natalie is a self-confessed social media queen, living with her partner in the West End of Glasgow. Since starting her profile six years ago, Natalie's posted 494 snaps of glamorous nights out earning her close to 3,000 followers and over 147,000 likes. But recently, Natalie's posts have changed gear. Oh, Jesus, my face. And she swapped the Chardonnay for a dose of double trouble. She's expecting twins and she's due in four weeks. It's sometimes having two babies in there, your stomach can go into all different shapes, but I quite like that it looks just like a big, I've swallowed a giant watermelon. Sometimes it's funny because you can think at the time you were quite big and then you go, no, 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 this is big. Hopefully it's going to be one of the last bump pictures that I post. Now all I do is eat and get bigger with my bump, so that's mainly what my Instagram is now, it's just my pregnancy. A few people have commented that actually they've said, you know you'll not be able to eat out as much once your babies come, I'll find a way. Child friendly place. Today, Natalie's making a few new wardrobe choices for a party in her honour. I'm wearing black because I found that underneath my bump and stuff sweats. <laughs> Also, I think black when you're big and you're not used to being big is a bit more flattering. I'll probably just wear a pair of new heels and they probably won't stay on for very long. To celebrate the twins' imminent arrival, her friends have organised a baby shower. All I know where the baby shower is, it's 12 to 4 and I know the location but I have no idea anything else about it. Pretty much anything makes me cry at the moment, so... Yeah, I'll probably cry. I'm not very good at this. Or pull it that way. Right, okay. At the venue, preparations are well underway. Where are we going to put the bunting? Thanks to the Instagram effect, baby showers are now big business around the world. Designer baby clothes and infant gift lists are the norm. And attending your friend's celebration could set you back an average of £50. Baby shower day! How much work has gone into all of this? Across Scotland, expectant mums are calling in the caterers, donning flower crowns and shedding tears. At Natalie's shower, friends add finishing touches. I'm Natalie's best friend. We went to school together. Um, so that's how I got landed with the job of arranging the baby shower for her. When she first phoned me, I started laughing and then started crying, then started screaming. But I'm really excited for her. I think, and having twins as well, she was the only person that would happen to. <laughs> first time having a kid, having twins and then getting one of each as well. So she's lucky that it's worked out that way. Her hormones are all over the place. <laughs> she's crying or she's either crying or laughing. I think she'll cry. I think she'll have everybody in tears at one point. We have a bag of popcorn. We have baby bingo to play later on. The friends have even roped in Natalie's partner to help. I messaged Paul uh, questions last night. So he's answered them. So then we're going to get Natalie to guess what his answers. 
We're just here for my baby shower at Dutch. I don't know anything about, and it's quite exciting. So we all know Natalie loves Instagram and taking a picture, so we created a hashtag for her. So it says, twin love Natalie's baby shower. So it means everybody who takes pictures today, if they hashtag this, she'll be able to type it in Instagram and see all the pictures of her day. Are you feeling glam? Mm, as glam as you can be when you've got two humans in your stomach, so yeah. <laughs> She's the Instagram queen out of us all, so she'll love this. Before you go in? Hi! Hey. Yeah, I like the river. And I'm trying not to cry today. Half an hour and it's coming off. Claire, how are you? Darling, good. Mm, you're looking beautiful. Oh, wee bums. I love that. And wee feet. That's so lovely. They're gorgeous and the cakes. I'll probably start crying again because I haven't cried for 48 hours. Natalie's not the only mum to be on an emotional roller coaster of tears and tantrums. Online, women are sharing the highs and lows of pregnancy hormones on the loose. I would get quite emotional and upset if there was no jam left or if there wasn't the right jam. I remember going to Asda and I couldn't find the one that I was looking for and I just kind of broke down and cried in the aisle. So my mood swings have been all over the place today. Um, been happy, sad. The hormones just, my body was just, I felt like being flung all over the place. My head felt like it had been kind of stuck in the washing machine. It was just, I couldn't think straight. Nothing was clear and I kept my pregnancy a secret for a good five, five and a half months until I felt okay with telling everybody angry, frustrated. Well, pretty much most of the way through this pregnancy, I feel like I've been on top of my emotions. However, from the minute that the music started on Mamma Mia 2 to the second that it finished, I was in floods of tears. I'm not 100% sure why, but that's just how I was feeling that day. Yesterday, we went for lunch at a coffee shop and a woman was just staring at me. And I wanted to pick up my scone with jam cream and butter. Yum and throw it at her face. And I know that's so awful to want to do that to anybody. Um, and to be honest, I don't even know if that's pregnancy related or if I would have felt like that anyway. Probably the latter. And the worst combination you can ever think of, hungry and tired. I'm just stretching out the tangles. <laughs> oh. Even with a baby shower in full swing. No, 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 you get the angles, you get longer legs down there. Oh, that's better. <laughs> this former party girl is all partied out. Oh, I'm done with dresses and um, heels for one day. I'm going to get changed <laughs> into joggies, a jumper and flip-flops, because I'm tired and have some feet. <laughs> have you got any of me? Wait a minute. So everyone's been taking loads of pictures. So I'm going to get everyone to send them to me, upload them, because I've got my own hashtag, so I might as well use it. I'm going to chill with me a cup of tea, and I'm going to have a wee look and see what all these nice presents are for my baby. Tack suits and pyjamas, that's it, the way forward, not heels. I tried, I've done all right with the heels, but my feet are a wee bit swollen, but they're comfy. And no prizes for guessing if any snaps of Natalie and her trackies make it onto her online profile. As Natalie's posts are now more baby focused, so too are many of our followers. I've got more mums and mums to be. It's grown with the pregnancy because people offer, like, like to offer as well support, I think, especially twin mums. So I'm going to put this on Instagram. But not every picture tells a story. Social media is great, but I think there is an element with, with, oh, which I'm guilty of as well. We try and make it look like everything's lovely and perfect. And probably to look at my own Instagram, it looked like my pregnancy was plain sailing. And that's not been the case. It's okay to like not be this goddess, perfect mum-to-be, because I'm certainly not. 
So if the news feeds don't match the reality, what exactly is the truth? There's a lot of things I didn't know happened in pregnancy. You know, I didn't know that it would be painful to ha just, you know, going throughout the pregnancy. My lifestyle is going to be different, but I'm looking forward to it. If I'm honest, I'm looking forward to the challenge. <laughs> but hopefully not before time. Natalie's past the 35-week point, and the twins could arrive any day now. Mine feel they're about to come out, sorry. It's <sighs> getting really, really bad pushing. <laughs> and just in case you see me sitting with my eyes like this. Just a couple more weeks to go, Natalie. Hold on tight. Online, women at the beginning of their pregnancies are sharing the weird and wonderful things happening to their taste buds. Pregnancy cravings. I had um, one craving when I was pregnant with my son Archer, and that craving was strawberry jam. I ate strawberry jam morning, noon, and night. I asked the women for chips with salt and vinegar and tomato sauce and brown sauce, and I said to her, I'm sorry, I'm pregnant. I know it sounds a bit weird. And she said, oh, hey, don't worry, when I was pregnant, I was smothering a sponge in soap and eating it. And that, that is just, that's horrific. It's 15 minutes past 12 at night and I have taken the world's biggest craving for custard. And my best friend just texts me to say that her boyfriend has left a tin of custard outside the house for me to collect. There it is. <laughs> I do try to be most of the time, but today I'm just feeling a bit, I had a bit of a craving for this. I know it's not good, but I don't make a habit of it. Sometimes you just want what you want. Pickled egg from a chip shop and a tub of mint chocolate chip ice cream. You bite half of the pickled egg and you get a big scoop of the mint ice cream. You put it on the rest of the egg and eat the egg with the ice cream on it. For new mum Azaria in Edinburgh, pregnancy cravings are a thing of the past. Oh, that's she like her food, Azaria. Mum to seven month old Bella, she regularly posts proud mum updates on her Facebook blog. Put your hat on when you're in. There we go. Today, Azaria and Bella are heading across town to meet Azaria's mum. It'll probably be off in no time. You'll rip it off, won't you? But see, it's already off. Whee! A walk that takes them right through the city centre and an area that brings back tough memories for Azaria. I think it's one of the busiest streets in terms of like pubs and like head nights and stag do's. There's all, it's always heaving, it's always busy at the weekend. There's always just a lot of people and that's why I used to sit here, because I could make a lot of money, because so many people went past. And this is sort of the main area that I sort of hung about, because it's central to everywhere. Jibu. Azaria had more to overcome than most first-time mums. From her mid-teens until she fell pregnant with Bella, she battled a serious heroin addiction and ended up sleeping rough. Tickle monster. It's just weird, like, it's even just, like, we used to sit down there. Like, if I got a bag, that's where we go and use, because obviously we can't sit and do it out in the open. And then when you go further along, a few years ago, that's where I used to sleep. It's just mental, I think, that not even 18 months ago, that's what I was doing. I was sitting over there, just, waiting for people to give me money. If I didn't fall pregnant, no, I'd definitely be dead. 100%, 100%. Death was so a better option than waking up, being ill every day, having people looking down their nose at you, not knowing your story. We are real people. We have families that care about us, even if we don't. We have people that love us, friends, like, we are human. Even if something happened right now, I know I've got her. I know if me and Alec broke up or if like somebody in my family died or something, I know I've got her and she's always going to be there. It is just the best thing I've ever done with my life. Bella's arrival 
arrival has also brought Azaria and her mum back together. After years of not speaking to each other, they now see one another almost every day. Beautiful. Just want to totally eat her up. But when Azaria told her about her pregnancy, she wasn't exactly over the moon. I didn't think it was actually going to make a difference to the way she was living. So initially I did back off. It's lovely to see Azaria and Alex just blossom into parents rather than Junk basically season. downing her. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't like using that word, but that's what it I is, know, junkies. It wasn't a life, it wasn't even in existence. It was just nothing. It was waking up, going out, getting drugs, smoking them, then going out, getting more money, getting more drugs, smoking them. That was literally it. There was nothing, nothing else. Yay! You are just a wee poser. Yes, you are. Samaya. Call me grand. It's great to see Azaria turning into the, the woman that she is now. It's the first time I've ever seen Nazaria. So happy and content. I think it's the first time that I've ever been positive about her staying off drugs. Because Mama's got you, cheeky monkey. And it's her daughter, Bella, that's provided the inspiration for Azaria's blog too. From heroine to homemaker, charts her journey from full-blown addict to full-time mum. I love being a mum and I love being around her and obviously I want to be there for her, but I wanted something in the meantime, so I just started doing this and it kind of, it took off more than I expected it to. Azaria's blog is straight talking and she hopes her honest portrayal of recovery will encourage others to follow in her footsteps. When I was pregnant and I was like really struggling to get clean, I didn't know anyone else who had got clean. So there was no like role model, there was nothing like that at all. So when I started it, initially it was just for the few people that I know that they struggled with drugs for years. It's not all people from bad backgrounds and they've been grown up poorer. It can affect anybody. It is helping a lot of people, not just the users, but it's helping social work and like professionals as well, so how, how to deal with them. And that's why I need to be so real about it, because I didn't have that person when I was stuck. I didn't have anyone to turn to. With only weeks to go until her due date, first time mum to be, Lauren, is getting a little more prepared in her latest vlog. I am packing my hospital bag because I've been feeling lots of um, lovely contractions lately, so I thought it must be time. I've never really held a newborn baby before, ever. So I'm really not confident with the whole operating them from boob to boob and, and just holding her and just, and just, I thought, ah, oh, and I really, really, really want to have a really nice breastfeeding experience. So I thought I'll invest in a pillow just until I get used to what um, a baby feels like. So yeah, really prepared for this. A couple of nappies and then these disposable briefs. Well, I'll show you them. Cause I had a wee, I had a wee look the other day and I was, howling and I was like David look at these they're so sexy aren't they oh they're just mm. <laughs> and then jammies like posh ja posher jammies that were trendy jammies for when the guests arrive and it looks like I've got my shit together like yes look hello I'm sorry about my big fat face but we're nearly there from swollen faces to stretch marks, mums-to-be online are getting to grips with their ever-changing bodies. I've been wondering, have my knickers shrunk or is my bum getting bigger? Probably the latter. My belly clicking, um, that was a really strange one. It was just like a noise like, um, you know, if you click your, your fingers, it was like indicating when you're going around corners, so that's what it kind of reminded me of. They don't really tell you how hairy you go when you're pregnant. My belly is hairier than my partner.
it's Lauren's due date. Oh, look at the state of me. I can't sleep at all anymore. There is no sleep to be had. It's just too difficult to get comfortable. I feel horribly unprepared all of a sudden. I just feel like, what are babies and how do we keep babies alive? Suddenly now I'm just like, doing. This is a 40 week pregnant mama belly and I have loads of pelvic pain today and hip pain, but I've definitely dropped, which is good. Three days later. Okay, Lon's water's broke and we're just getting ready for the <laughs> Getting ready. Pat the makeup and we thought pretty for the baby. It's a bit warm in the bed. Excited. Don't contact. <laughs> just we'll get let's get up to the hospital first. Okay. okay. I'm just constantly <laughs> peeing. Baby's heartbeat. It's two in the morning. I haven't slept. That's not good, is it? Well, no, how long do you think we'll be here for? Another half hour, and then we will go home and just leave her in the bath. Fingers crossed. Go to sleep. Shh. As Lauren's labour slows, they're sent home to wait it out. <laughs> How is hour 21 of labour going for you, David? I'm I know, right? Hour 21. I don't know if it's hour 21 of labour. Well, since my water's broke, it's 21 hours. Yeah, the contraction stuff. I've three. had, like, about... 15 contractions and they're knocked together so it doesn't really count at all. With motherhood just around the corner, in Glasgow, social media butterfly Natalie is making some final preparations. They always jump right here. I'm just getting my hair done the last time before I have my babies. Um, so I don't want to come in here and get my hair done and go into labour. But it's not just personal grooming time that's about to change. Are you comfortable in that? Yeah, I'm fine. I didn't plan to have children, and then my partner and I decided to try, thinking it would be a long period of time, not as quick as it was. I feel really lucky to be having one, never mind two babies, but I don't think the reality will kick in until I actually see them. Even though I can feel them and stuff, and they don't really stay at peace, I still, I still not. 100% sure that it's happening, if that makes sense. That's deep, that way. This will take a bit of getting used to as well. The Chinese dwarf hamster line and the peach fuzz, wee backs and bums. With only weeks until the twins arrive, sometimes they respond to my hand. Oh. Making the shift from pregnancy to parenting is proving tricky. I'm not prepared at all, which every day everybody asks me, have you got your pram, have you ordered your pram, have you got this, have you done your nursery? No, none of it. <laughs> when I found out I was having twins, it's a bit, okay, it's a bit surreal. I think one baby getting told I was going to have is something hard to get your head down, but when you're told you're having two, yeah, it's, it's quite strange. I had two private scans and I got a gender scan as well. And then the NHS scan you every four weeks and now it's two weekly. Just they get growth scans, twins. This here was one sack with one twin and here is the other sack with another twin. So there's two sacks, two babies, and then they've got their own placenta as well. Hence why there's quite a lot to carry about with me. Baby girl is going to be called Mila, and the baby boy is going to be called Blake. People say, "Oh, you might change your mind when you see them," but no, that's that's what they're getting called. A girl and a boy. It's, it's just nice to have. It's like a wee family already. 
I've not really bought very much, bought a few things. These are all kept them um, things that have been gifted. With the birth yet to sink in, Natalie is at least making headway with her hospital bag. The baby stuff I found easier than stuff for myself. I got a bit ridiculous with my own stuff. My friends kind of had a word with me and told me things that I needed. My lip plump's still in the bag. I'm going to have nice big juicy lips after I give birth. I think I got a wee bit confused between a spa weekend and going in to give birth. <laughs> yeah, some of the stuff I had was absolutely ridiculous. I had um, really lovely pyjamas that stopped fitting me at about three months. I don't think I'd even get a leg on now. These are cute. Lip plumping balm, lovely shower gels. <laughs> now it's a lot more practical, like nipple pads, pads, yeah. Oh, it's took me a wee while. <laughs> Luckily I didn't go into labour way back then because I wouldn't have been organised. I can't wait to meet them now. I feel like I've been pregnant for four years. Like, I, I don't, it feels like the longest pregnancy in the world. It's strange though, some days I get up and I'm like, no, I could have them today. And other days I'm like, no, I'm too tired. <laughs> I'm too tired, I don't think I can deal with this today. I can't say I like hospitals or anything medical, but I'll just need to man up for the day. It's one day out of my life, I'll need to just man up, I'll be fine. They have good drugs. When I get home, I'm just going to wing this. I don't really have a clue. I saw a girl posted a thing on social media about a book that she had. It's what, a twin girl that I follow. And I screenshot it and I'm going to order that book and hope for the best. <laughs> it's not just Natalie turning to social media for advice. Online, news feeds are fit to burst with mums-to-be telling it exactly how it is. So what things didn't uh, the people didn't tell me about pregnancy? I knew that the baby would press in your bladder and all that kind of stuff. But I counted one day last week and I was 36 times to the toilet. And in one day, that's not even including the night. That you can have nightmares for nine months solid. I actually have quite freaky dreams normally, but these were like up another level of freaky. It's something that happens, but you don't realise it's happening until about six, seven months in, is the rib cage going out and and everything moving up to make way for this huge bump. That's a bit, yeah, when you think about it. Uh, oh my God. That was actually a relief. I thought I was gonna need to put them back on and wear them all day and be in pain. This is a nightmare. I'm really glad that I'm going on maternity leave now and I don't need to think about having to wear certain types of clothes or shoes because it's just uncomfortable being uncomfortable all the time. For 27-year-old Di in the east end of Glasgow, today marks a big milestone in her first pregnancy. There we go. I'm officially out of office and it's time to have a baby. For the past few months, communications coordinator Di has been recording the apps. I'm just off to a breastfeeding workshop to find out how to make my boobies work. And the downs of her first pregnancy. I look like a really crap version of a Teletubby. It's like Lala's human cousin gone wrong. And now she has four weeks on her hands until the big due day. So today is day one of maternity leave. Woohoo! Um, I don't really know what I'm going to do. It's going to be weird. I guess I'm just going to need to get stuff organised for the baby. So I'll just crack on with that. And I guess just start to get more scared of D-Day. <laughs> uh, no, I'll try and calm my nerves a bit. I've downloaded a few hypnobirthing um, apps and podcasts and stuff. So I'm going to try and get in the zone. It's getting close. I feel like I've been pregnant for a hundred years, um, but yeah, it's exciting. It's getting there. For some, the shift from career woman to new mum oh. can be a tricky one. And online, mat leave is always a hot topic. Mat leave, I think, sounds very glamorous, but I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. It really is just a case of trying to do what you can to get through 
and bring this baby into the world and get into some sort of routine. Routine is amazing. I'm one of these people that I like a lot of order, I like planning, I like lists. Um, so sort of going from a, a job that really was very mentally demanding in that kind of respect um, to just a different way of mentally demanding, it's quite, it's just quite a challenge. When I was their age, my mum was at home with me. Um, so I don't think you really truly appreciate that until you are working full time Monday to Friday um, with we ones to get up and ready in the morning. So hopefully I'll get my reduction in my hours, and my caseloads and get to spend some more time with these boys. I honestly thought like that was the, the most exciting part of being pregnant as well as maternity leave and I've counted it down for day one right through. I kept going 15 weeks to go, 14 and right down to the bottom and now I'm like, oh gosh, would, hurry up baby because I'm so bored. On day one of maternity leave, mum-to-be, Di, has plenty left to tick off her to-do list. This big pile of crap is what I need to organise into taking into hospital with me. So this is me starting to get ready and pack my hospital bag. <laughs> Giant pants. So I think <laughs> I took this too far and got really giant pants. I think I got, I can't even find where they... they <laughs> They're all still folded up, so like I don't think I've ever. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! <sighs> oh my God! They're extra large. They say that you need large pants after you've given birth, uh, just so that it's more comfortable around your stomach and you can get your big giant maternity pads in them. But they also, I've I've totally cocked it up because I was meant to get black. Also, I really don't think they need to be that big. You could fit three people in here. <laughs> I can't take this. These are ridiculous. These are for elephants. <laughs> I have four pairs of gigantic knickers. <sighs> Luckily for Di, and every other mum-to-be in Scotland, around a month before their due date, a big box of supplies is delivered to their doorstep, courtesy of the Scottish Government. Baby box is something that I learned about at one of my midwife appointments. And then one day, this huge box uh, arrived at the door and I struggled in with it, which was an absolute effort. Um, and I was just so wonderfully surprised at what was in it. There are loads of little outfits, lots of little gender neutral outfits, which is so important, especially for me, because I don't know what I'm having. You're just so preoccupied with thinking about getting things like cots and prams and cute outfits. I know it sounds bad, but it's true, that you don't really think about the practical things. Little things, little baby grows. I, think, I don't know if baby grows are the ones, no, because vests are the ones with no arms. So much to learn. Nipple pads. I don't really know what to expect with these. I've not had to use them as yet because I don't have leaking nipples. Ah, something that I personally don't think <laughs> I'll be needing for a little while are these condoms. <laughs> From what I've heard, um, these will probably stay in a drawer for a while. Um, so we'll just put them <laughs> to the bottom of the box. <laughs> And when all that organising begins to take its toll, there's always tea and telly to while the hours away until baby arrives. I am very much looking forward to having four weeks off from work, um, but I fear that I will get a bit bored and there's only so much bouncing that I can do. Probably be left with a, a couple of weeks at the other end where I'll just sit with my feet up, bounce my ball and drink tea. The dream. After a long two-day wait, vlogger Lauren's contractions are now more frequent and her and her partner David are back in the maternity ward. Lauren got taken in about six o'clock and she's been on some medication, so she's in the bath. She can't really show you, can maybe show you one of her legs. The 
The baby is positioned back to back, which could mean a more painful delivery. Just getting the epidural done. We're not getting the epidural anymore. Uh, well, eight centimetres, rather than five. So, thank you. Thanks very much. Breathe, 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 breathe. Breathe, 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 breathe. 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 Gone, you don't care what's going on at all anymore. Oh, I just curled it because you're daddy. Oh, my goodness. You remember. It was just the absolute best thing in life. And then everything just became perfect. Punch. Use your slot to get. Seven, one and a half. Are you ready, Dad? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Need to bend down a wee bit. Here we go. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Just get to sleep now. It's going to be fun. It's going to be so early. She's done such a lot. And on social media feeds across the country, women are sharing their childbirth stories in all their gore and glory. Labour. I'm not going to lie, labour was, for me, very, very difficult. I think my body just went into total shock. I was absolutely exhausted. It's like somebody throwing you from the Eiffel Tower, you landed on your back. It's, that's how I would imagine it. And I just really wanted this really calm, mother nature bath well. That went out the window. I find labour excruciating, like actual like torture. If I'm being very, very honest, it was like torture. I, at one point, asked them to let me die. <laughs> Which, obviously, I did not mean. Oh, that's the other thing my husband said. He's like, well, it said you weren't even in active labour. I was like, really? Is that right, aye? Uh -huh. Let's go outside, I'll show you something active. Updating her blog in Edinburgh, 26-year-old Azaria has more reasons than most to be brutally honest about her experiences. For me, it's a bit of closure, to be honest. So I've spent all these years you don't know why you use drugs, no, no one answer. So for me, it's like a bit of therapy, it's like a bit of closure. Like some people talk to a counsellor, I can write on a computer and it all comes out. For Azaria, the comments and likes are less about the ego boost and more about the encouragement to keep on the right path. It's definitely something I want to carry on, I 100%. I, don't, I can't see myself not doing it. It's a massive part of recovery, I think, is helping other people and there's other people that think the same thing as well, like on sort of reco recovery groups. It's like kind of giving back for see all the bad you've done when you've been an addict and you've been that different person. It's like trying to give back to the people that you hurt and trying to make up for it, basically. To continue her road to recovery, she must take a controlled dose of methadone every day. Thank you, cheers. I'm usually just in and out. I don't like to hang about because obviously you'll get people there that you've known before and it's okay saying like hello and asking how they are but you don't want to get into like a big conversation, just keep them at arm's length. The majority of them know that 
obviously we've got the baby now, but you're always going to get that one person that's trying to sell something or get rid of it because they're skint. I'm like planning to come down off it and be off it by next year. You can't just go straight away, you can't go into like, boom, 90 ml of methadone, you need to gradually increase the dosage while you're reducing the dosage of the heroin. I try and think of it like a medication, like any other medication. I only take it because I have to take it. To be able to like parent her, to be able to be a good mum, I need to be fine, like I need to be okay. To your neck and the back of your head as well. If you live here, there is a massive drug problem. Just everywhere you go, the city centre is really bad. It is really, really bad. Wee, fancy, fancy, fancy. If you're oblivious to it, that's fine. But once you start getting involved, you see it everywhere. Everywhere you go. I was saying to my mum last week that I think I'm genuinely at a stage where if somebody offered it to me, I could knock it back. There's only been once I've really, really wanted to go out and use, and it's just... I just, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't physically bring myself to go and put my shoes on and then go away looking for it. Because she was there, it is really, really hard work. But then when you see her, like, trying to crawl or, like, eating so much, and it just, it puts the biggest smile on my face. Like, I can't believe she's mine. Hey, cheeky. Cheeky, cheeky. Yes, a cuddle. Cuddle, cuddles. Thank you. I didn't think for a second I'd have such a happy baby as well. That sounds mad, but I didn't think I would have such a happy, smiley baby, and I think that's because I thought I wouldn't be a good mum. I just couldn't imagine being this happy and this bonded with. It sounds really cheesy, but it is like another addiction, seeing her smile, like I just want more. As Lauren continues to vlog her first post-birth moments, family and friends meet the new arrival, Marley. But Lauren has other priorities. Nine months of waiting. So much. Nine months. Bronze, macro. It's so worth 50 times of Okay, home time. <laughs> What's a better feeling, taking her home or having her being born? <laughs> uh -huh. This is a close second, isn't it? That's pretty nice. Yes, Marley. Oh my God, I love her. At home, the new parents try their hand at bath time. You have no idea what's happening, do you? Right, hold her, hold her. You like it? You like it, Marley? And we're stressing her. She actually really likes it. Yeah, how's it? Cancer baby. Can Stadium love it? Oh. No, no. No, not on the towel. She's just. What? Pooped in the towel. She's just pooped in the towel. <laughs> towel. <laughs> Goodbye, expensive towel. The first month can be the toughest, so sharing the highs and lows with anyone who'll listen is a welcome relief. Every morning, it's the same. It's stressful in a way because you don't know what's wrong with her. You you know you've fed her, you've changed her. Um, she's been burped. She's had sleep, I don't know what else to do. It can get quite stressful. I think if we didn't have so much access to social media, I would feel a lot more isolated. But it is interesting how things change, how certain friendships change. Um, not like in a bad way, but it's just, you're, you're not as available as you always were. You bring this baby into the world, you fall in love with it, you are in love with it, and you would do anything for it. And that love just grows every day. There's no feeling like this in the world. Bringing a baby into the world is just what we're here for. 
several months down the line, Lauren updates her followers on Marley's routine. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Today is my birthday. Um, yes, mum's birthday. Gives no Fs. I'm laughing my ass off at the contrast because you know what it's like, your pals tag you and stuff and they're like, this birthday last year and this birthday the year before and I'm like, yeah, I've just swapped bottles of champagne for bottles of milk and sleepless nights in a club or sleepless nights on my nursing chair breastfeeding, so lol, lol, please sleep, please sleep for mama. Honestly, whoever said he's sleeping like a baby never had a freaking baby. Sleep. Sleep. No, never sleeping. <laughs> so yeah, happy birthday to me. Woo! Across town, it's double birthday celebrations for new mum Natalie, as twins Blake and Mila make their way into the world four weeks ahead of schedule. This is Mila. She is four days old today and we're hopefully going to get home tonight. I was in hospital for four nights, so that was long enough, but we're really lucky because they avoided special care and the babies didn't need any oxygen or feeding tubes. Are you gorgeous? If they came even a couple of days earlier, and you know, there's people that have them at the same gestation and they do end up having, needing help with their feeding and their, or their breathing. Five days after the twins were born, Natalie and her partner brought their ready-made family home for the first time. They came home and didn't leave the house for a week and it was just quite overwhelming. There was loads of visitors. I still didn't really know what I was doing. Oh, hi. I'm being a bit more patient now because it's only two weeks and I think I expected to be back to a size six, eight, jumping about, full of energy. I mean, now it's an achievement if I make a pot of soup for doing well. But I'm quite happy to just sit and spend time with these two. And for the mum who wasn't the most prepared ahead of the twins' arrival, did she manage to wing it throughout her labour? I don't imagine I was the easiest person in the world, but I also wasn't screaming like what you see some women like. I was quite quiet. And on the way to the trip, apparently, I don't really remember this, decided I was going home to have them. Mm. I couldn't even get off a table and I, this temperature and was shaking and I don't know what I was doing, but I didn't go home. I stayed and had them. Now they are all settling in at home, Natalie's finding she has a little less me time on her hands. I don't have time to do anything, but just some lipstick and mascara and you can feel more human. I've been lucky because I had help, so it's not like... Uh, I've not been stuck up, like, I'm not on my own or anything with them, so... I, I don't think I would manage on my own. I think just because there's been people about and stuff, I, I'm quite lucky I can get a shower and whatever, but even then, just because I'm doing so many things, I don't seem to manage to get in a shower some nights till about 11 o'clock at night. Oh, here we go. I've been out once. I've been out, we went for breakfast on Sunday and they slept the whole time, so that was fine. A hungry boy. I'm going to a wedding at the end of September, so that's my first kid and but I'm going out next week for dinner. I'm going for a Chinese next week, child free. So that'll be interesting. He pulls the strangest wee faces. It's like a wee old man. As for the news feed, it's out with the glamorous selfies and in with twin cuteness overload. I think people are quite interested in twins. I think as well, it's quite unusual to see t as babies as tiny that aren't in hospital. I found a lot of people have thought that when they've came to see them. They, they like, I've never held a baby this small or anything. The pictures of these two in the videos, be, everybody seems to really like. It's probably a lot better than my own face. And with hundreds of likes already racking up, it looks like the twins are well on their way to social media stardom.
For vlogger Lauren, becoming a mum has been a steep learning curve and she's keen to share everything she's learned with her online audience, which has now grown to nearly 2,000 followers. <laughs> Say hi, yeah. Hi, I found really hard being a first time mum. <laughs> doing high fives? Oh. There's nothing that helps build out your confidence when you can sit back and evaluate and go, you know what? I'm a damn good mum. That baby is still alive and breathing and thriving and doing poos and you're doing amazing. So sit back, take an hour. You bloody deserve it. I had a moment today when I was just like, I just feel so lucky to be your mum. Like, I can't believe I look at her sometimes. I'm like, I can't believe I'm your mum. Like, you're, she's the best baby. She's gorgeous. She's so happy. <laughs> I'm just so, I can't believe I'm her mum. I cannot believe Marley is my baby. <laughs> she's just wonderful. I'm just so lucky. That's all of you. That tired. Lucky and tired. One month down the line, Azaria has been accepted onto an open university course in social work. And eight-month-old Bella has learnt her first word. Mama. And as for Di in the East End of Glasgow... I know it's been a while since I've said hello or provided an update, and that's because I've been a little bit busy. Introducing baby Kai, Andrew McKelvey to the world, who came a week early. Um, yeah, so I've been pretty busy with mum life, um, and that was four or five days ago, so it's been pretty hectic, but I'm so in love and couldn't be happier. Next time, we meet four mums struggling with the juggle of family, work, and a little me time. And because we're so busy, we thought we'd make things busier by having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> the grafters balancing business with parenting. I've not had any time for myself at all. And like, sometimes you do get frazzled or whatever. You do have like a day when you're like a bit emotional, you're like crying or whatever, like just because like you're running about all the time. And some who are making money from motherhood. We're hoping, like, maybe something like a little Nyx catalogue or a wee mother care catalogue. It's definitely not an easy job. It's not an easy option. It's the best option. <laughs> <laughs>